Hey guys, welcome back to Tecton Z. How are you doing? Thank you for joining. Today's episode is going to be pretty chilled compared to last week. We're going to be building a new exhibit, which I'm pretty excited about because it's an animal I've not used before. But before we do that, I want to look at this entrance area here, uh, which I'm pretty happy with. I like the way it highlights the Penguin Palace. But if you look at it from up here, it's kind of empty. So I've got a few ideas for improvements and we're going to get those done before we move on to building the exhibit. So I want to keep this nice and open. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to put things on the floor because uh, they don't spoil the view or get in the way or anything like that. So I'm just going to put some simple geometric lines into the floor to lead people up to the Penguin Palace. And then we're going to build some fairly small water features that are going to go on either side of the entrance. So again, they won't be obstructing the view as you walk through the front entrance. But if you look to the side, you'll see them and they should look really nice. I've taken this from the little sculpture part that I made last week. Uh, I didn't really even mention that last week. I built that to bridge the gap between the Grand Plaza and the Cheetah Conservation Center. Uh, I like that circle motif. I use that a lot throughout the zoo. Uh, so I'm using it again here to make a water feature. If it looks a bit cramped at the moment, don't worry, I'll move the kiosk along uh, in a bit to give it a bit more room. I'm also doing something which I never really do, which I should do more of, um, which is use one of the habitat items as part of a build. This is the elephant paw. Uh, it's a, a nice little water feature which doesn't have the sort of 18th century vibes that all the in-game fountains do. So I use this to create it to keep in with the modernist architecture of the rest of the zoo. Whilst I remember, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who donated to Kangathon last week. We raised a total of uh, £6,680, which is pretty amazing, so thank you to everyone who helped with that. Now, as well as building these water features, I'm also going to be tidying up some of the backstage areas, like the one you can see behind here, uh, although I probably won't bother putting that in the video. It's not the most exciting stuff, uh, but it needs to be done. Uh, and I'm also putting the names of all the animals in the forest along the wall of the Grand Plaza that you can see behind the fountain here. Uh, which looks really cool and sort of uh, lets people know what's in there. Building this water feature is also forcing me to do something that I never do because we're in franchise mode, which is build uh, without being paused, <laughs> which is kind of scary in franchise. You never know what's uh, what's going to happen. But um, it needs to be done so I can see how these water um, features are, are working. By the way, I'm sorry if my voice sounds kind of weird today. Uh, I just have my uh, vaccine and uh, it's kind of knocked me out. <laughs> I've got like zero, zero energy, but it'll take more than that to stop a weekly series from being weekly. <laughs> uh, what we're gonna do next is get some mulch in here uh, and then some bracken to tie it all together and make it look nice. And it's a really, really nice contrast on the edge of this entrance area to have the some more of the white concrete and the green bracken, which is probably my favorite plant to use for uh, this kind of stuff. And then next up, we're gonna get the zoo's logo into the floor of the Grand Plaza. Uh, this is inspired by um, Kuali Zoo. I love how they have that massive logo on the floor by the entrance. Uh, this is a lot simpler. Um, two reasons, A, I mean, those guys are really good. Um, but secondly, because obviously the style of this zoo is all about sleek modernist lines, uh, rather than um, sort of detailed or over um, over complex designs uh, and things like that so it is literally just the metal floor pieces because they're reflective and they look really good they stand out nicely and then the zoo's logo written as always in Noto Sans and then a nice little welcome sign to welcome you in and then the final uh, improvement that we're going to make before we build the exhibit um, as I mentioned earlier was to get the names of all the animals in the forest onto the walls of the Grand Plaza leading up to the uh, the forest area. So that will sort of draw people in when they know what's in there. Um, I'm writing them all in the style that I use for the signs of each individual enclosure. But rather than writing the names of the enclosure, just the names of the animals. Uh, so it's simpler, I didn't want it to be too um, complex and too many different things going on. Um, I start writing them on each wall panel but um, having written them all out, and this was a massive pain because it's uh, because it's um, circular. So 
I couldn't just move them along, but I decided I didn't like having them on each panel. I wanted them on alternate panels, so there was a, a gap between each one. So I, I then spent so long individually moving and rotating each piece, it probably would have been quicker just to write it all again. But um, by the time I realised that, I was well underway. So um, I just had to, uh, to keep at it until it was done. But I think it looks really, uh, really good. It really makes a difference. I didn't want to put too, uh, too much on these walls. They were Originally these walls were literally just plain white walls. Um, but I added the orange stripe because I thought it was quite a strong design. Um, I didn't want to add anything too crazy onto it. But definitely getting the animal names on there is something that's been on my list of things to do for absolutely ages now. Uh, so it's good to finally get the time to do it. Alright, so let's check out what it looks like when it's all done then. Ooh yeah, I like that. I think that looks so much better with these water features, a little bit of graphics on the floor. I think that really makes the entrance to the Grand Plaza look a lot better than it did before. So let's move on to the exhibit then. So we are making an exhibit for the Sacred Scarab Beetles, which I've never used before. Um, exhibits get a bad name in this game because of their lack of customization um, and I really struggled to do anything interesting with them myself when I first started uh, playing but back in episode 4 I think it was I did um, an exhibit episode with the tree frogs in the Grand Plaza um, I spent ages trying to come up with some sort of design that wouldn't look like a 4x4 cube which is obviously what they are um, I was really pleased with what I had managed to do uh, and that was, that's was that been um, one of my most popular episodes. I got a lot of uh, nice feedback on the building that I did. I put it on the workshop and that's had um, a lot of downloads as well. So I thought I'd do it again here in Tecton Desert. So the first uh, tip to making exhibits look good, in my opinion, is never to just have one of them. I'm trying to make one 4x4 cube not look like a 4x4 cube. Um, it's pretty tricky. As soon as you have two of them next to each other, then you get a lot more options for making them look good. So this exhibit will only hold sacred scarab beetles, nothing else. But I still put two next to each other, and we'll just have a few in each. Uh, and that gives you the freedom to make a more interesting building. The main other feature you'll see here is the giant sphere on top of it, which represents the, the dung balls that they famously form. Um, whether the design of the, the exhibit should feature a giant ball of dung, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, I actually got rid of it in the end because uh, the only big sphere in Planet Zoo is the one of the art shapes and it's plastic and it was just driving me mad. You know, you would never build a structure out of concrete and then put a giant plastic ball on top of it. So without the ability to uh, you know, retexture that into to concrete or plaster or whatever. In the end, I just I just couldn't live with it anymore. So so I got rid of it. So if you're thinking that that was a terrible idea to put that, don't worry about that because uh, I get rid of it anyway. We've got a nice uh, modernist structure coming together here. I've got this sort of uh, Venetian blind effect of these um, limbs along the the back of it, and then I've got some of the new North African arches at the front because this is a, this is a well actually it, it's found in Europe and Asia as well but predominantly an African animal and it fits in with the shelter at the back of the meerkat manor as well and like I say we've got two spaces for exhibits so we can get a more interesting shape to the building itself so the dung ball at the top gets replaced um, in a bit and then I've built like a, a second skin to the enclosure, which makes the shape a lot more interesting. I've also raised the terrain around it, so you walk up to it, again, just for a bit of uh, a bit of variety in the look. And then I just use these plaster panels to cover up the bits of the exhibit that stick out to the sides. So when it's finished, it looks uh, it looks like one one piece, even though there's actually quite a few pieces in there. I really like the beetles in this game now that I've uh, now that I've got them. I think they've got probably the best animation out of all the exhibit um, species. 
Um, I think back in London Zoo 1985 in the insect house there, I had every insect that was in the game at that point. Uh, so everything except for these guys and the, uh, the leaf insect as well, which I still haven't seen, but I will hopefully be putting that into this zoo somewhere, probably in the jungle I would imagine. Um, another thing you can do to make them look more interesting is to actually dress the inside of them. Um, it takes a, a while to, to make sure that where you're placing things isn't going to end up chopping one of the, uh, the exhibits in half or one of the animals in the exhibit in half. You've got to learn where they uh, appear, which, um, which different animation points that they, that they use. But then you can put uh, you know, other plants and things in there to make it a bit more interesting. And just make sure that the upgrade options that you can select to each exhibit with the you know the extra branches and things like that just make sure you use different ones for each one so they don't look like uh, they're both the same and then similar to the tree frogs I've planted up the negative space in between the two exhibits um, so it gives a continuity and another little trick that you can do to make the exhibits more interesting if it is close enough to a habitat animal is to put um, an education sign for a habitat animal outside it and then use a custom billboard texture to replace what's in there so that you can have a large sign for the exhibit rather than the tiny little signs that you get by default. I end up using both of them here. And then next up we change the dung wall for uh, this semicircular piece which projects over the front, similar to the tree frog exhibit and then some of the triangular pieces which I really like I always try and get those in two builds when I can last used them on the uh, Lima Lounge as it's now named uh, thank you to Christopher Sila for, for that name that will be going on to the Lemas uh, today and then this scarab sign which is recolorable looks really good and that is the exhibit finished Hope you think it's a bit more interesting than the standard exhibits in the game. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next week where I believe we'll be back in the jungle. See you then.